So as a review for the drawing sheets, our first sheet was our assembled cubes, and we're seeing all six sides, top, front, right, back, bottom, left. Second sheet should be the exploded view, which has the parts list and the balloons. And then the subsequent five sheets would be your multi-view drawing. So like the top, front, right view with an isometric view. And then today in this video, we're going to go over the process for adding the dimensions to complete this activity. Okay. I've already placed this sheet as far as the drawing. So I'm going to create a new sheet so we can kind of start from scratch. I'm going to skip filling in this information, but for yours, obviously put your name, the name of the drawing, scale, and all that information. So as review, if I hit base, I can select the part that I want to add to the sheets. In this case, I'll do my blue part. It's really critical to think about what's the appropriate front view to place on the drawing. The front view is going to be the view that has the greatest overall dimension, has the most natural position, no hidden lines if that's possible. Okay. The way I built mine, this is the front view, but I don't think that that's necessarily the best front view for my object. So as I click through the different options, I can cycle through different possible front views. Okay. If none of these work, I can also do change view orientation and do like a custom front view. Like if I think, okay, this view, which is called the right, is the best front view for mine because it meets the criteria, I'll use that as my front view and click finish custom view orientation and bring it onto the sheet that way. Thanks. So I want to add the coloring to this view here. Right click, edit the view, and add the shading. Now I need to add dimensions, and the biggest thing with dimensions is people ask me, how do I know the appropriate number of dimensions for this drawing so that I have enough information, but it's not overkill, not duplicating information. Okay? The best way to think about it would be to think about the number of changes that I have in either the width, the depth, or the height of the object. So let's look at the width first. The width would be from this side to this side of my front view. If I start on the one side, there's one two, three changes in my width, so I need three dimensions associated with the width of my object. If I look at the height, there's one, two changes in height, so I need two dimensions for height, so now I'm up to five. And changes in depth, there's one, two. So I know I need two dimensions for depth. So in total, I need seven dimensions exactly to sufficiently dimension this drawing. Any less than that, I'm missing information. Any more than that, that I'm duplicating information. To add dimensions, I'm going to go to the Annotate tab, which is the same place where we got our balloons and our parts list, and I'll click on the first option, which is Dimensions. So I'm going to start with the overall dimensions for the width of my object first. The overall dimension would be from one side to the other. Notice that we get these little like dotted lines. These are snapping to different like standard locations, and you can use those as a reference for placing the dimensions. Now let's do the overall height of the object. And then I'm going to do the overall depth of the object. Now I'm going to go back in and add the location dimensions. Okay, so like the location between here and here is the information I'm going to need. And between here and here is what I need. So I have my three that are associated with the width, so that's sufficient. I need to add one more for the height of my object. I need to add one more for the depth of my object. And that's it. That's all the dimensions I need for this. A lot of people will ask, how come there's no dimensions on this top view? Because I don't need them. If I were to add dimensions on here, it would be duplicating information I already have here. So it's okay that one of my views may not have dimensions. In this case, we do not for this one. So I want to repeat this process for each of the five sheets. Right? So I'll have seven sheets in total. We'll save these. And then we will also go and create a PDF out of these drawing sheets so that I could submit this on the LMS. To do that, I'm going to go to File, Save As, click Save Copy As, and I'm going to change the file extension from IDW to PDF. So now it's going to generate a PDF for me. I do need to go into the options and change it from Current Sheets to All Sheets. If I leave it on Current Sheets, it's going to make a PDF of only the sheet that's currently open. If I change it to all sheets, it'll make a PDF for all sheets. In my case, there's only four, but in yours, when you're done, there should be seven. And I'll hit OK and save, and it should generate a PDF with all seven sheets in it. You can go back and check. Again, mine will only have four. Yours will have seven. Last step, then, is to actually build our Puzzle Cube pieces. 
we're going to submit this on the LMS. And before you do that, I want you to go ahead and put together the actual wooden cubes, and we'll submit a picture of the cubes fully assembled, and then a picture of what the individual parts look like. When you're ready to start building the actual wooden cubes, I would ask that you come see me. I have some tips and tricks to get yours to fit together nicely the way that mine do. Once we have that and those are submitted, we will be done with this project.